This is soccer legend Matt Letizia, former Southampton and England midfielder with over 500 appearances and 200 goals for his club. He is the English Premier League's best ever penalty taker, boasting a staggering 97% success rate. I'd like to take you on on penalty kicks. Really? <laughs> yes, really. <laughs> Like most boys, I wanted to be a professional footballer, but I was never quite good enough. So, taking on one of the greats is stuff that dreams are made of. I would suggest you find a goalkeeper that you can bribe um, to let <laughs> you. I'm not going to resort to that. I'm not going to resort to that. I tell you now, I'm not going to resort to that. Penalties can be the deciding factor in a game. The moment where victory or defeat is just a kick away. Uh, I enjoy taking penalties. It kind of appealed to my ego, I think, the, the, the fact that the whole stadium was kind of having to look at me. Do you think there's a remote possibility that I might beat you? No. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, was that a little bit too confident? Yeah. <laughs> Now, I get to set the parameters of this football challenge. I've already decided it's going to be penalties. To find a way of beating this football legend, I'll look at sports science, statistics, and even resort to a little bit of hustle. I want to do all I can to give me an edge before I take him on in a penalty shootout in a week's time. First step for me is meeting soccer coach Mark Grabwell from the London Football Association and get some professional advice on how to do it properly. Oh, good save! First, Mark wanted to see my schoolboy skill levels. Oh, he guessed the right way as well. To find out what he was working with. It's harder, isn't it? Thankfully, Mark had some tried and tested techniques to help me, using a few props. To get him technically right, we use the cones and the imagery. And imagining just putting the ball through that cone, it's a lot easier to drill a ball for six yards than it is for 12. Because, you know, it's a bit daunting once the keeper's in there. It does tend to change things. It's so much easier with the cones. But will I be any good when they're not there? Visualise the cones. Using cones for accuracy really works. I can hit the target more often than not. I really feel I could be in with a chance. I now need to see what else I can do to get an advantage. Now, I like a gamble, but I always try to stack the odds in my favor. Statistics are vital to soccer these days, so I'm meeting a football analyst and statistician, Ben Littleton. Can his research give me an edge against England's greatest penalty taker? Now, I know that in the modern game, stats and number crunching are the thing. Give me the rough outline of what you actually discovered about penalties. Well, in terms of penalties, the key thing is penalties and specifically shootouts are not down to luck. You can never guarantee 100% that you will win, right. but you, there are ways of improving your chances. The key thing in a shootout is kicking first. 60% of teams that kick first in shootouts and will winning. win the shootout. And why is that, do we know? Because the pressure mounts on the team kicking second. And if you are kicking a penalty to avoid defeat in the shootout, your average scoring record drops from 78% to 62%. And if you're kicking a penalty to win the shootout, it goes up from 78% to 92%. This is really helpful. Going first could give me a slight advantage in the shootout. Another useful stat is that keepers tend to dive more to the left of the goal. But what's more, it means that the rest of the goal is more open. So if I aim down the middle or even to the right, the odds are stacked in my favor, giving me more chance to score. Not only that, it seems there are two ways I can take a penalty to capitalize on these statistics. One is called the goalkeeper independent strategy, and that is where you kick the ball, and it doesn't matter where the goalkeeper goes, you'll just pick your spot and you're confident. And it's assumed that that is the best way of taking penalties. Yeah. The other way is the goalkeeper dependent method. Okay. So what you're doing there is waiting for the goalkeeper to make the first move and then going in the opposite direction. And over a long period of time, it's actually a more successful way, if you have practiced it, 
And if you're your skilled. Life. If you're skilled. Yeah. It might be easier for a non-professional, yeah. which is the nicest way of describing your abilities, <laughs> yes, I would guess, thank you. to go for the goalkeeper independent. Do we know what Matt Letissier does? He waits for the goalkeeper to move. Okay. And if the goalkeeper doesn't move, I also know where he prefers to kick the ball. Where? He prefers to kick it to his non-natural side, which, as a right footer, would be to his right. So what do you believe, ultimately? Is it all up here, or is it all in the skill? You could have the stronger mentality than your opponent and still win, even if you haven't got the skill set that he's got. Oh, that's what I'm hoping for. That is what I'm hoping for. So Ben's given me some hope. I can use stats to compensate for my lack of expertise. It seems the best penalty takers wait for the goalkeeper to move first, but I don't have the skills to do that. So I've decided that I'm going to use the goalkeeper independent method. So no matter what my keeper does, I'm not going to pay attention to him. I'm going to stick to the spot that I've picked. I now have my penalty taking technique, but I'm worried about the keeper. I think if I understand their mindset, it'll help me in the challenge. So, sports science is my next stop. <music> Professor Mark Williams at Brunel University has studied how goalkeepers can read a penalty taker's body language to help them anticipate in which direction the ball will be kicked. So, Mark's wired me up to a state-of-the-art optical system he's developed to monitor my eye and body movement to see exactly what my body language tells the keeper when I take a penalty. Oh, good save! OK, that's not too bad, Alex. You uh, scored a few, but there's a, a bit of a scope for improvement as well. Certainly. I think there were three things we can really work on. You spent quite a bit of time fixating on where you were going to place the ball. The monitor shows that my eyes are fixed on where I'm shooting for about four seconds. Time for a goalie to adjust his position to make the save. Secondly, you had quite a few fixations at the goalkeeper. A couple of times he was flapping his arms, but clearly that's a distraction. And then finally, we need to have you fixating on the ball for long because you were very inconsistent and variable in terms of your fixations. So ignore the keeper, focus on the ball, and do not look where I'm going to place the ball. That's right. Yeah. Okay. So statistics can give me an edge, but it seems I've got to do it all without letting my body language give anything away. No pressure, then. The only thing I can do now is work on my technique and practice. So that's where I'm heading next. I've come to Tottenham Hotspur to meet one of the English Premier League's most distinguished goalkeepers. American Brad Friedel made England his home, playing Premier League soccer for 17 years. He's also represented the USA in three World Cup tournaments. He's faced a lot of penalties, so he knows exactly what it takes to score one. And he's the man to fine-tune my technique. I'm taking on the footballer who's got the best premiership record in penalties. I'm sure you know who that is, Matt Letizia. Matt Letizia, OK. Yeah. That's, that's quite a challenge. Yeah. <laughs> Wasn't bad. It's a good save if you run up with just a little bit more pace. You know what? I wouldn't even want to be in the way of that. Right. Too slow of a run-up. Too slow of a run-up still. Yeah. So... Oh! Try two more steps back. There you go. Okay. And a quicker run-up. Yeah, excellent. The extra power Brad showed me is such a simple thing, but it makes the ball so much harder to save. There you go. Listen, after seeing your styles, if you hit it with power to this side, yeah. I think that's good, and anything low that side. Okay. I don't think you should even attempt for high that side because it goes too close to the goalkeeper. Yeah. There's one stat that keeps coming up, which is the penalty that's down the middle. Mm -hmm. What about that? I think the bigger the game, the bigger the occasion, the easier it is to score down the middle. OK. In the bigger occasions, I think so much adrenaline gets going, and they'll go early. Very difficult to save them with your trailing arm or your trailing leg, again, if it has a lot of pace with it. Okay. I think it's very bold, it's very brave to hit it down the middle. Yeah. Um, but if you hit it high down the middle, I think you have a very good chance of scoring. OK. All right. So I've, I've done my stats. I've been to university. I've trained. I know what my strategy is. 
I'm ready for the challenge. Don't know if I'm going to win or not, but I'm ready. <laughs>